And good evening, my lovely Lost Tales, and welcome back to the Blue Rose Respite for a very special stream indeed. We are doing yet another Q&A to celebrate hitting 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. But thank you so much to the Wolf Warrior for your 34-month free sub. Have safe travels next week, boss. I don't know if you got my gift mail yet, but also happy Christmas, New Year, and everything else you might celebrate. Thank you so much, Wolf Warrior. Um, I haven't received any fan mail uh, in the mail uh, in the past uh, couple of months but that's okay hopefully you'll get here um in time but if not i've got um a wonderful uh front desk that takes care of uh deliveries for me so don't worry i'm sure i'll be in safe hands but thank you so much for the 34 month resub you're amazing thank you i hope you guys are all doing well tonight I was thinking, like, when was the last time we actually did uh, a Q&A stream? And I think it was back in April when I hit 30k. So it's absolutely amazing to me that, you know, I managed to celebrate two massive milestones like this in one year. Um, considering they were like 10,000 subscribers apart, which is... At, it, it feels good. I'm not gonna lie, it feels really good. <laughs> Um, just a, a quick heads up, even though I'm feeling a lot better than I was last week, um, we're still going to probably keep the stream to maybe roughly about two hours or so, two and a bit, because um, I'm not fully over my cold yet. I have a very nice massive mug of uh, lemon and ginger tea with some honey and a little bit of whiskey, so it's kind of like a hot toddy sort of thing, and I have some tissues, so please forgive me if I need to cough or turn away for a second to just clear my throat because I'm on the mend, I'm not quite there yet. So, but I wanted to have tonight nonetheless because I'm feeling a lot better and I wanted to celebrate this with you guys before I go on holiday. Oh, thank you so much, guys. I, I wanted to put a little bit of extra effort into my look this evening and it felt appropriate because it's almost Christmas to have the kind of like jazz lounge kind of ambience. Because like the Blue Rose Respite is kind of stylized like a cool sleep speakeasy sort of vibes where I just happen to play cool video games and you guys like to hear me talk. So like this is the weirdest intro for like, you know, have you ever been to like a, a jazz lounge or like a, an air, um, not an airport, a hotel lobby around Christmas and you have the jazz singer who's telling you about her life and what her plans are for the holidays and I hope you're all doing well tonight. Hope you're all doing well. Isn't he just a champion on the piano? Give it up for my wonderful assistant. Thank you, thank you so much. I hope you're all doing well tonight, guys. <laughs> but thank you so much, Naikaiju, for the 15 month resub. 15 already? Tonight I'm raising a drink to my new relationship and a great milestone. That's fantastic, Naikaiju. Congratulations. I really hope things go well for you. And I raise my drink to you as well. <clears throat> but thank you so much for the support. You're amazing. Thank you. And guys, we have a hype train that's already so, so close. So if you want to renew your subscriptions, now is the perfect time to do so. Or if you feel like donating, that's totally up to you. No pressure at all. But um, I'm going to give you guys a rough schedule for this evening's events. Um, I'm just going to give my thanks to uh, my current patrons and then we'll start the giveaway. Um, and then I'll go through answering the questions that I got uh, from my patrons and from my Discord. And then we'll play Warhammer Smash or Pass. So Scarlet, just so you know, Scarlet's in chat. She is the wonderful soul that put the list together. Um, we're going to be doing that in about the middle of the stream. So probably in about an hour or so. Maybe a bit under that. See how things go. Oh, thank you for the hydrate check, uh, Game Brain Jakaras. Hmm. I also have a massive bottle of water beside me because we are playing special pass and also it's good to kind of <clears throat> stay hydrated keep my fluids up because it's still a little bit sick and thanks for the stretch checks guys <laughs> all righty oh grander planet was that um uh the the piece you did of Saitoro recently that i shared on um that i, I reposted on uh instagram was that you just because I didn't, uh, I think he did uh, diff have a different username for that. Um, yes, and so in the middle of the stream we'll do Warhammer Smash or Pass. Um, and then I'll uh, go through uh, some of the questions that I got on, on YouTube. <gasps> Guys, we have a hype train going already. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much Hayden for the gifted community sub to uh, Shay with the God. Thank you so much Hayden for the amazing support. Thank you, thank you. 
Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, so then once we've finished uh, Warhammer Smash or Pass and I've like completely down my water bottle, um, I might need to take a, a quick break just to make some more tea and then I'll answer uh, some more questions and stuff. And uh, then towards the end of um, the evening, when it gets to about two hours or so, when the giveaway timer runs down, I'll draw the winner and then we'll wrap things up for the night. So, I want to give a big thank you to my current patrons over on Patreon, uh, my Cherubim of the Archive, Alexander Ratcliffe, Ben Halitosis, David Shepard Jr., Dude Bubba Buddy, Hayden Park, and Tony. Thank you all so much, you absolutely amazing souls. And to my Archangels of the Forest, thank you so much to A New Universe, Alan Smith, Casey B, Charles Keats, G2042, Ivy Orkerman, Jade, Liked Bacchus 142, Luce Klepke, Martin, Norse Fox 93, Pokemon UB, Sign of the Emperor, Steve Duffy, Valerie, and Z. Thank you all so much, guys. I really appreciate it. And my angels of generosity, a big thank you to Alex, Annabelle Hardy, Brandon McCandless, uh, Caleb Short, Captain Birdseye, Catherine Gorman, Chaywood, Cobalt, uh, Cobalt, sorry I had to get the T in there, I, think, I thought I said Cobalt, uh, Cobalt, Cool Guy, DiCarlo Salmon, Demonic Aurora, Derek Cascrande, Dork Souls 4, Etch-A-Sketch, Edwin Williamson, uh, my sincerest apologies if I mispronounce this. Uh, Gentilesse Lecure. Lecuyer. Gentilesse Le Lecuyer. Apologies if I horribly butchered that, but thank you. Uh, Harry Smith, Leo uh, Leviticus, Outsider HP, Pint Sized Pip, Rap uh, Raptor, Sezunia Harrington, Shadowfang, Soul Dragon, The Man Behind the Screen, Tiffany White, Wolf Lord of the North. Thank you all so much, my lovely Lost Tales, my amazing Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you. And there's some of you on the list who have been supporting me on Patreon for a number of years and you support me across multiple platforms. Thank you all so, so much. And speaking of supporting me across multiple platforms, a huge thank you to the wonderful, as always, Scarlet Novella. 33 months, almost three years, friendo. And you're still talking to me. Thank you. Thank you for, for this. I haven't chased you away just yet. Thank you so much, Scarlet, for just being an amazing friend, a wonderful bean, and just an incredible supporter like guys you know how amazing Scarlet is do I even need to go on but thank you so much Scarlet for taking the time out and like helping support me as a twitch sub as well as well as an amazing friend thank you so much amazing friendo thank you and Kimikun thank you so much for the primary sub thank you so much for 45 months now <coughs> excuse me um what what um, thank you so much, Kimikun, for the primary sub. I really appreciate it for 45 months now, coming up to four years. Thank you. And Hayden, holy shit, did you just donate? I think you just donated like 70 pounds. Thank you so much, Hayden. Dude, thank you. Dude, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. You're absolutely incredible. Thank you. Um... Alrighty, um, so uh, let's get that giveaway going, shall we? So uh, just to remind you guys, I'm giving away a Steam key for Cult of the Lamb. So you have to have like a Steam account in order to be able to activate it and use it. And yeah, I'm just letting you guys know that and I'm getting things ready. Because there's a lot of moving parts when I do these streams. Okay. Um, Cool, 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 that should all be good. And yes, so just to clarify, you do need to be a follower on my Twitch channel in order to take part in the raffle. Um, and if you are a, a Twitch subscriber, you do get five extra tickets when you enter the giveaway. Um, but it'll come up with the prompt and everything in just a second. And guys, we just reached the end of this hype train. Thank you so, so much. You're amazing, guys. I know I keep saying you're amazing, but you guys are amazing and I do love you. Thank you so much. All right, so 
Let's start this giveaway then in three, two, one. Okay. Okay, it should be working now. So use the, um, the command exclamation point giveaway or one word in order to enter the raffle. And okay, cool, cool, cool. It's working. I can see you guys' names popping up. Lovely. Alrighty then. So that's going to run for the next two hours while we, uh, while I answer some of your questions. And let's get going, shall we? It's Diamond J. Thank you so much for the follow. You are now one of my lovely lost tales, and you are welcome at the Blue Rose Respite anytime. Take a seat and enjoy yourself. We're just getting started tonight. And don't forget to join the uh, giveaway as well if you want to win a uh, Steam key for Cult of the Lamb. <coughs> Excuse me. Do, do, do. All right. So let's start out this evening with some questions, shall we? Hang on just a second. All right. That's a bit better. Okay, so uh, the f I'm going to read out uh, answer questions from uh, patrons and Twitch supporters first, and then um, what was my schedule again? Yes, uh, so answering the VIP questions first, then we're going to play uh, Warhammer um, Smash or Pass, in which I know I'm going to be judged horribly for it, for my choices, but uh, we're all here to have a good time tonight. Um, Alrighty, so here we go. First question is from the wonderful, as always, uh, Wolf1138, uh, aka Hayden. Thank you so much for your question. Mm, sorry. <coughs> Still a little bit scratchy, but I'm okay. Um, alrighty. So from Wolf, uh, hey Step, I have a question for the Q&A stream, but it might take a bit longer, so I thought I'd message to you. So I did prepare for this one a little bit in advance. If you created a tarot deck, using your characters as the major arcanas, what role would you assign to each of your characters? Also, what would you use for each suit of the minor arcanas? So, I looked at um, my most popular or uh, best known characters from, from my ASMR tales, and I tried to match a major arcana with them. Alrighty. So, uh, first one, I have to go with the beloved Momo! Hi Momo, how's it going? Oh, thank you so much for dropping by tonight and thank you so much for the follow, sweetie. Sorry, I love Momo so much. She's a wonderful friend. Uh, she took the amazing, um, she's an incredibly talented photographer and she took the wonderful photos of me as Scarlet Witch at San Japan this year. So, thank you so much for dropping by, Momo. Feel free to stay as long as you like. That My chat's really nice and welcoming, so feel free to chill here for a bit if you want. Hmm. Hot you too, Momo. <coughs> and Versailles War Song, thank you so much for the follow. You are now one of my lovely lost tales as well, and you are welcome at the Blue Rose Respite anytime. Take a seat and enjoy yourself. Oh, sorry. <coughs> I'm just trying to turn away from my microphone whenever I need to cough. Ah. Alrighty, so. Thanks for the hydrate check. Mm. I'm gonna be taking a lot of those, aren't I? Oh, it's all good, Momo. Feel free to lurk. Feel free to engage as much as you like. Um, just enjoy the music and enjoy the vibes. Alrighty, so. I went through my list of um, most popular characters from my ASMR tales, and I tried to pick a major arcana that I think would match them. So, first on the list is the wonderful Countess Stefania Swan, aka Evelyn. Um, I thought of, for a long time of what Major Arcana would match her, and I think... Hear me out. Given what she is and her evolution over the story of uh, the, my ASMR tale, uh, The Castle of Blue Roses, I think she would suit the Death Arcana, Major Arcana. Hear me out. D the Death card in the Major Arcana, it's not necessarily about, like, death and gloom and despair. It's about transformation, ending of cycles, and 
she's a character that transforms quite a bit, especially if you listen to the epilogue, where she has time to think on... And she is a, me a person who is undead because she's a vampire. So death felt appropriate because like of the choices and the transformation that she makes when she allows love to come into her life and she develops real feelings for the listener, the hunter character. Um, so I think uh, that would be the best choice, uh, the best match for her that I could think of because of that transformation, her being a vampire part of the undead and also the transformation she goes through the ending of the cycle of um her place in the vampire court and stuff like that so i thought the death uh major arcana would be um a perfect match <coughs> um the next one i picked like the thing is with lilith she's my interpretation of a of a character she herself is an actual like powerful like infernal creature that um has impacted a lot of people's lives in innumerable ways so this is just like my kind of thoughts on what would suit her and i'm not sure if this is a match for like the major arcana that's linked to lilith as a uh, an entity but this was just like going off of the way i portrayed her in um lost in the, Inf the inferno um i picked lilith uh i picked the major arcana for lilith as the high priestess her being a uh, spiritual uh, aspect, even though there's this deeper complexity to her, the High Priestess is a major arcana that is both about like f feminine power and magic and mysticism. And I felt that that was the perfect pick for her. <coughs> and next, for uh, Queen Kava, my wonderful Dryder, Queen Kava, I picked the Empress. The Empress is a card representing, um, again, feminine power, especially a um, m more nurturing kind of uh, kind of uh, feminine aspect. It's about like building home and comfort and things like that, as well as like might and majesty and feminine power. And with her, she is like that regal aspect that she embodies so perfect. Sorry, so perfectly. Um, and just that full sense of confidence in herself and the power that the mantle that she carries i felt that the empress would be the best match for her um and yes she is a very nurturing she's a very nurturing character i love her so much all right um the next character that i picked too going off of queen Kava, was silka i picked the fool major arcana now the Fool is about the starting of journeys and that kind of giddy, almost naive optimism that you have uh, when starting an adventure. So I think also because Silka, we love her. We love Silka here in this house. In the Blue Rose Respite, we love and protect Silka. But she can be a bit of an idiot and a bit of an airhead. So... I love her to pieces, but at the same time, uh, she can be a little bit wandering into danger. Like she got lost uh, and she stumbled into a cave and that's how she made, met Kaver because she was running from uh, wolves. She accidentally stumbled across a wolf den and then she just happened to stumble into a drider den and that's how she found Kaver. So it's definitely, um, it felt appropriate to pick the fool for her. Um, now, for the next one, um, for Glasha, the green fire, my <laughs> beautiful orc lady that I think many people in this chat really love. Um, for Glasha, I picked the sun. As well as the aspect of fire that's connected to it, the sun is a card representing, like, happiness and success and power. And she is just, she has so, so much confidence in herself. And she is like the leader of her clan. She is like, exudes like power and confidence. And like, she knows the influence she carries. So she's worked hard. She's battled hard to get to where she is, the seat of power. She like, in the first of um, um, my series, Embraced uh, by Emerald Flames, like she 
before uh, when the first time she meets uh, the listener character. <clears throat> She's on her way to take care of her brother who was like causing trouble. And then, you know, she takes care of that. And then it like the sun, she, she reaps the rewards of what she does. So I think that was uh, an appropriate match for her. <coughs> Excuse me. And thank you for the hydrate check, uh, Ma. And thanks for the stretch, Hellhound Kin. Sorry, I didn't do that before. Oh, there we go. She knows her worth and she revels in it. She has a robust joy of life living in the moment. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why I picked it for her. <coughs> also, she's just a character that exudes warmth and comfort. Like, come on. You I bet almost everyone in chat would want a hug from Glass of the Green Fire. Because she looks like she gives the best hugs. And you know, like, orcs in, like fantasy Dungeons and Dragons settings like especially like in D&D &D, you, you know they give great great hugs they're just so tall and their muscles are so big and they're so happy yeah she lifts you into the air with her hugs oh yeah she give massive bear hugs with just like the big smile on her face just I, I love Glasha I love Glasha so much but <clears throat> let us proceed now uh, for the next one I picked, uh, Cytaral the Eternal, my very regal, very beautiful, fucking terrifying blue dragon. For her, I picked the Tower. Now, if you know a thing about the Major Arcana, the Tower is a card representing calamity, destruction, like, great upheaval. Cytaral... Even though my series, it has, you know, spicy cheekiness and oh, like, she cares so much for the listener character. In the previous chapter to the one that I uh, released recently, she absolutely destroys every almost everything. And um, thank you so much, Cytaral's ex-boyfriend, <laughs> for the 300 bits. Sorry, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for the 300 bits. You're amazing. Thank you. Just the perfect, perfect timing on that one. Perfect timing. Um, so yeah, with Cytaral, even though uh, she has that that soft, soft underbelly spot for um, uh, like this, this little squishy heart feelings for listener that she's slowly coming to terms with. She's still a blue dragon, and chromatic dragons can fuck your shit up. And she lay waste. She just caused so much destruction to uh, the city that they were in um, before flying away. And yeah, so she is about like upheaval and calamity and destruction because there's a reason she's got so many titles. Like she, she's a force of destruction, um, and. So I thought the tower was an appropriate pit, uh, pick for her. <clears throat> and for the next one, I was thinking Mimi, my badass vampire biker from uh, my Duskgate kind of setting series. I haven't really given it a name yet. Uh, for Mimi, I picked the chariot. And uh, from what I can remember, the chariot is about like charting your own course. It's about um, having that sense of freedom. Sorry. <coughs> I'm so sorry about all the coughing tonight. I thought I'd be a lot better. Mm. Uh, oh, uh, Best War Song. Speaking briefly of D&D &D stuff, I'm currently writing a Curse of Strahd run and was wondering if Seraph Stories has any recommendations or um, tips. Um, nothing really outside of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. If you have that book on you, that should serve you pretty well. Um... Don't be afraid to be diabolical. That's all I'll say. Um, I've never run a D&D &D game yet, but um, just just have fun. Have fun being evil. Um, have fun being evil, but understand where your limits are for your players. I think that's probably the best advice I can give. <clears throat> this isn't a voice break. This is a break for you to capture your breath. Thank you, Sam. I need a sip of tea. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, oh, but that's better. Um, I think I will need to make some more tea later on. <coughs> mm. Alrighty, so 
Um, so yeah, for Mimi, I picked the chariot. Um, Mimi, I picked the chariot, because uh, again, like, uh, freedom and uh, forging your own path and your own destiny. Mimi is a character that not a lot has been revealed about yet, so I don't want to give too much away. Um, but yeah, the chariot felt the best pick for her. Also, you know, she, like, motorbike, chariot, like, I don't know, that felt kind of appropriate. Now, the next one uh, was for Night Angel, my Yandere superhero whose videos always get the most views and I ain't judging or anything. I just found it so fascinating that that first video that I posted with her just blew up. And I know Yandere is popular, I just didn't realize that they would be that popular. All right. Um, Night Angel. So for Night Angel, I picked the Major Arcana, the Devil. The Devil in the Major Arcana represents, um, restriction, of course, like, uh, like, losing inhibitions and things like that, but the Devil, Major Arcana, it felt like because she is, like, so controlling and so, like, possessive of the listener character, and the devil, usually depicted on the major arcana, is um, always like holding chains or um, restricting uh, what is usually depicted as like the lovers from the lovers card is then like they're being restricted by um, the devil and wrapped in chains. That felt appropriate. The fact that that's a major arcana that's kind of about like restriction and control and things like that. So Night Angel, uh, the devil major arcana. And for the last one that I picked, um, uh, my Lindre, my beautiful Gorgon. She's she's only got one video out so far. Um, but she is such a precious bean and she is so sweet and so wholesome. Um, for her, <clears throat> I picked uh, the Hermit. Because she is a um, very reclusive character. She's a Gorgon. She stays away from the world. Um, but she nurtures this space around her. And she keeps the few that she has in her life very, very close to her heart, like the listener character. Um, and so I, I felt the Hermit was the uh, best pick for her. Because again, like the Hermit's uh, seen as a, the main, in the Major Arcana as like a figure of isolation, but also wisdom and introspection. So the Hermit felt appropriate for her. And then uh, for the, th the four suites of the Minor Arcana, so the four suites typically are uh, swords, cups, wands, and pentacles. So if I was going to do like a custom, I don't know, Stephanie Swan Quills, like ASMR Tales uh, tarot card, my four suites would be swords, chalices, tomes, and quills. So essentially swapping out tomes, uh, pentacles for tomes, and wands uh, and quills for wands, because it's still a similar kind of uh, motif. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that was my answer to your question, but thank you so much for the question, Hayden. <clears throat> um, for the next question, uh, comes from Luce Kletke. Um, I think they were from, uh, Patreon, one of my pa amazing Patreon supporters, but thank you so much for your question, Luce. Uh, well, since it's time for yet another Q&A, then here is another question. It's a road trip time, but you are informed on such short notice that you only get to pack one hastily crammed backpack of clothes, two books, and your phone along with its charger. What two books do you bring? I bring with me Good Omens uh, by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, because that's my favorite book. Um, I bring Good Omens... If it's for a road trip, I maybe would want something like nice that, you know, I could read to my friends. Like I would, I would pick Good Omens because, you know, it's funny. It's my favorite, favorite book. Um, if I wanted to bring something else along, I might bring along The Last Unicorn by uh, Peter S. Beagle because it's a nice, it's like, it's a beautifully written fantasy story. It's nice and approachable. And if we're going on a road trip, you know, you can get through it probably over the course of the drive. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry about that. I should have turned away from the mic. I'm sorry. Um, so I would take uh, with me Good Omens 
and The Last Unicorn. Those would be my two picks uh, uh, for my two books. But thank you so much for your question, Luce. Oh, thank you for the hydrate check, Medloid Man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Momo. It's so good. The book is very good. Um, my one recommendation, if you're going to pick up a copy of the book, get a copy that has the footnotes included. Because the thing is, there's a lot of in-jokes or like funny little asides in the book that are like in the footnotes of the book. And some editions don't have that. They just have like the main story text. But there's lots of like fun little things in the footnotes. Um, so yeah, that's my one recommendation when it comes to the books. I know, Hayden. I'll... I I was gonna say I'm sorry. I should stop apologizing. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stop apologizing. I just I don't like coughing a lot. It's because I know it's annoying. Yeah. Alrighty. So uh, for the next question, oh thank you so much, Luce, for your awesome question. I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, let me just check. Everything's still going well for the giveaway. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, so my next question, and uh, it, this is a question that I got asked by a couple of different people, so I'll just answer like all of those like um, in one go. Uh, from Wolf Lord of the North, how do you come up with all your amazing stories, Steph? Um, this is a question that I usually get almost every time I do a Q and A. Um, the thing is, like, I I tend to keep, like, a note uh, open on my phone. So if I come up with a cool idea for a concept or, like, I'm watching something on TV, like a fantasy series or um, just I'm inspired by something like, oh, that could be an interesting concept. I'll just make a quick note of it. And it could be, um, like, I don't know, Yand like the Yandere superhero, my Night Angel series. I was like, you know what? I've only done, like, dip my toe into Yandere a little bit. Um... I think I might have been watching The Boys, and I was just like, you know what? Let's make. I want to do a, like a messed up superhero kind of story, so I'll make a note of that. I'm getting around to doing that. <clears throat> um, a lot of the time, it's like just genuine, like it's just like little tidbits that I take from media that I watch. I try as much as I possibly can to not take direct inspiration from other. Uh, amazingly talented ASMRs that I enjoy just because I never want to accidentally copy anyone um, of course like that's near impossible especially if you're doing uh, ASMR that involves like vampires werewolves y yandere's especially um, you, there's almost a yandere on every single channel to be fair um, but I never want to like listen to an ASMR and then be like oh I should do my version of this no 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 I like to focus on having an interesting uh, story or something that I feel like, oh, that's, I haven't really thought of that before or I haven't seen that done before or I will be like, or I'll be like, okay, they've, they've done that, but how can I make it a bit different? Like, how can I put my spin on it? Um, and so I, I write about things that I, I just, I write about things that I find cool, like, or things that I genuinely enjoy, like, and it's fun, like, it's almost like a little short story writing exercise for me that I can do um, uh, every every month, or every, a couple of times each month, to be like, oh, you know what, just give this a try. And some ideas don't stick. Like, I have, there's a reason that I only release two ASMR tales a month, because um, I break it up so that, like, for the first week or so, I'm just plotting out ideas, just trying to find one that really, like, sparks my interest. <coughs> excuse me. Um, see, I said excuse me. I didn't say sorry. Like that. Um, so, I I just focus on where I find like a genuine point of inspiration, and then I just kind of go from there. And a lot of the time, it's like, oh, I haven't seen this done before, or it might be something like, okay, I've done a lot of more heavier kind of. Um, or maybe it's been a bit bleaker, or maybe I've gone in a particular direction with um, the stories I've been putting on my channel recently. And I'm like, oh, you know, it's a bit grim, it's a bit dark, or it's a bit, like, s serious. Let's liven things up again, and, you know, I'll make, like, the the, the pixie um, uh, uh, ASMR tale. It's just like a breath of fresh air to just kind of, like, keep things light and interesting, keep some uh, diversity going. 
Um, so you're always on your toes and uh, throw out something a little bit unexpected. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of what the best way to kind of answer it. But I always have um, my phone on, nearby me so I can make a note if I come up with like an interesting idea. And then if I find, oh, you know, you know, it's coming up to when I need to work on a new script. I can't really think of anything at the moment. What's something that uh, I thought of a couple of weeks ago or I think would be an interesting idea? And sometimes if I'm thinking like, you know what? I'm just going to jump on my Discord and ask, hey, what haven't I written in a while? Or what kind of character would you like to me to consider? Because the thing is, I almost never take requests. Um, or, rec or like, because the thing is... As much as I love you guys and I love getting feedback and stuff like that, sometimes I will get messages of being like, Hi, my name is so-and-so. Can you make a story that is with, like, this name, my name, as, like, the listener character? And can your character have all these specific things? And I was like, mm, Thank you for watching my videos, but I'm sorry, no. Um, Free or Frost, thank you so much for the follow. You are now one of my lovely Lost Tales, and you are welcome at the Blue Rose Respite anytime. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys. Um, take a seat, Frio, and enjoy yourself. <coughs> and so, yeah, like, a lot of the time, that's why I, I prefer to write my own scripts, because then I am a little bit of a control freak when it comes to my content. I just like being able to see the story from start to end, and fully like embody the character and also it might also be like okay I need to work on this voice like I should make up a character like that has this kind of voice and then the story kind of evolves from there because I have to think about the character first um but yeah it comes around in lots of different ways like how I come up with uh stories a lot of the time it's just like I go with my gut feelings and uh see where it takes me from there um and I just get little bits of inspiration from everywhere, just like I think most writers do. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Wolf Lord of the North. And uh, I think that answers a couple of people's questions that I got from YouTube as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And my next question comes from Saint Sam the Good Boy. Uh, how to hug from so far away. Also, what's your favorite part of figuring out a voice for a character? Also, how can my mortal mind comprehend all the majestic beauty radiating from you like a bright star shining upon my days as a lighthouse beaconing hope in a dense night fog? Also, how do you make friends with the fae god slash goddess? Asking for me. It's me who wants to know. Uh, how to hug from so far away. I find gifts help. Gifts. Send cute gifts of hugs. Those, those help uh, close the gap a little bit. Gifts and memes, they help. <laughs> uh, what's my favorite part of figuring out a voice for a character? Uh, as a voice actor, sometimes you just have to come to terms with the fact that to an outsider, you kind of look like you're a bit crazy. Um, so because I live alone, um, I sometimes I'll just like try to like chat or something to kind of like fill the silence. And then, or I'll like be watching something on YouTube and it's like from a cartoon. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Uh. So, or I'll be watching something that's like a cartoon or an anime or something, and like the character will have a particular voice. I'm like, oh, that's that's an interesting voice. And then, like, I'll just start kind of experimenting with it, and then suddenly you get a voice like the lamb, and it just kind of comes out of nowhere. And it's from listening to or watching a lot of cartoons and, and and it's just like you kind of just start experimenting with it and then you realize oh i could do that voice now and then you kind of just make a little mental note like can do weird cartoon voice i don't put that on my resume um at the same time like if i sometimes the voice will come first for a character before i have an idea of a story um other times i'll be like Okay, I'm playing, I don't know, like, uh, I'm, I'm, like, for Glasha, for example, like, big, physically imposing orc kind of character, so I find sometimes if I kind of take up the posture, um, there's another thing that a lot of voice actors do is they'll kind of embody the character in, like, a physical trait, so you probably saw with, like, that cartoony voice, it was like, my eyes got a little bit bigger, I'm like, well, I'm a little bit more optimistic, and my hands kind of pop up like this, like a little cartoon character. Um, whereas with Glasha, like, I kind of tend to sink lower in my seat. 
and have that sudden growl to me because I'm forcing the air deeper into my chest. You know what I mean? <laughs> and also it's like those little puffs and grunts, just like the... <sighs> like you're imagining having those big tusks in your, in your mouth and you have to kind of uh, work your words around them a bit. But even sitting like this, like I can more comfortably have my uh, larynx, which is... <clears throat> I'll set up for a second. Um, you more comfortably uh, shift your voice box all over the place. Um, so it's the same, it's, it's something that I picked up or learned about really, um, when I was taking singing lessons and it was like, how to have like a really high, like nasally sort of voice. Cause you're pushing all that air up into your nose as opposed to like shifting it much further down. So you're more speaking from your chest, like that kind of thing. But that all comes from practice and practice and more practice as a voice actor. Like it's only been in like the past maybe three, four years that I've been really focusing my skills as a voice actor and just trying to uh, work on that as much as I can. But then once you're aware of the little tools of the trade on how to get the most versatility out of your voice, like the possibilities are endless. And now, and then it's just a, uh, a way of like just getting into the uh, the flow of it and getting into practicing it. And um, hang on. <coughs> excuse me. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, favorite part of figuring out a voice for a character, a lot of it's like, I think I like the experimentation and just when you kind of like have that moment of like, where did that come from? Just, did I say that? And you kind of have to just like do a double take, just like, I can do that. Like, I think that's probably my favorite point, uh, or my favorite part of like figuring out a voice for a character is when you kind of like take yourself off guard, just like, Oh, that was cool. Like, I didn't know I could do that. Um, so that's probably my favorite part. And as for your last question, how do you make friends with a fae god slash goddess? Um, bring, uh, bring offerings. Uh, snackrifices, as I've heard they've been called. Snackrifices. <clears throat> and it varies from uh, fae god, uh, goddess. It varies from uh, entity to entity. Oh, thank you so much for the hydrate, Mike. Uh. And yes, if you want to make friends and not get whisked away for eternity, uh, come up with a fun uh, pseudonym for yourself to give away your real name. Don't give away any teeth, hair, uh, nail clippings, words. Just be careful and think about what you say before you say it. Uh, but yes, bring snackrifices. I'll leave that open to interpretation on what you bring, but snackrifices. Bring snackrifices. <laughs> and definitely be polite. Absolutely. Um, uh, punctuality, politeness, and courtesy. Courtesy and just be a good bean. Bring sacrifices. Be uh, careful what, what, with what you say. Use a pseudonym and be polite. That's the best advice I can give. <laughs> but thank you so much, Sam, for your questions. <coughs> I need some more sip from my tea. It's hmm. better? Alrighty, so I think it's time. Uh, Scarlet, are you here? Are you in the chat right now? Or are you lurking? Because you're ashamed of me. Give me one second, guys. Do, do, do. I hope you guys are liking the music. Let me know if uh, uh, you can hear it nice and clearly. One second. Hang on. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mm. Uh, what does your necklace mean? It looks very pretty. I've been curious to ask. Oh, I kind of added something to it recently. Um, so my necklace is a, uh, a pentacle 
uh, with these uh, oak leaves, and they, they could be wings, they could be oak leaves on either side. And uh, right next to it I have a tiny little sickle, and uh, this pendant and this chain is from a brand called Eat a Love. Um, I love them so much. They have such gorgeous jewelry. Um, but yeah, I kind of have these two little charms uh, on uh, two, uh, two pendants on my necklace, and I wear this almost every day. Alrighty. <coughs> yeah. Alright, brilliant. Scarlet. Because I haven't seen the list that Scarlet put together, and I'm a little afraid. Ooh. So give me just a second, guys. I want to get things set up. How's this music's weird? There we are. I feel like we need to keep the smooth jazz going for this event. <sighs> Fuck. Okay. So. Guys, are you ready for Warhammer Smash or Pass? No, there's photos as well. There are names and there are photos. Scarlet put this list together, so a huge thank you to Scarlet for doing this. Pour yourself a drink, settle in, we're gonna enjoy this. Alrighty. Hello and welcome to the Stephanie Swanquill's Warhammer 40k Smash or Pass 40,000 YouTube subscriber special. This PowerPoint was created by Scarlet Novella. This will start off tame, but with some of the most popular characters first, but some of the later choices are sus. Love you, Stephanie. I love you too, Scarlet. You're a wonderful friend. I cannot express to you the sheer amount of, like, N what if what the fuck have I done? When I sent her the idea for me like what to make this Q and A, uh, this 40k subscribers celebration, like kind of linked to Warhammer, and I was like, has anyone done Warhammer Special Pass yet? And she was like, I can help with this. So, buckle in, guys. Lastly, a big thank you to Remleys from 40k Theories for assisting me with this. Okay, big thanks to Remleys for also helping with this list. <clears throat> also, uh, just a little caveat before we proceed. Um, I am as green as can be when it comes to Warhammer 40k or Warhammer Universe in general. I will not know probably 99% of the people on this list. Almost all of them, I imagine are guilty of war crimes or crimes of one degree or another. Like, their kill count is at least, at a low level, four digits long, at a minimum. At a minimum. So, I will not know the context for a lot of these characters. So if I say I will smash one character and I will pass on another, do not take that as an endorsement or a detraction from that particular character. I know you guys have probably got your favorites if you're a Warhammer fan. We're just here to have fun. I'm I'm just going to be mostly going off of aesthetics here. So just letting you know before we proceed. <clears throat> oh fuck. <laughs> what have I done? Okay. We have 35 eligible bachelors for your review today. Buckle up, guys. Let's do this. Are you ready? One second. Then let's begin. <coughs> Sanguinius, Faction, Blood Angels, Primarch, Smash. <laughs> smash. He looks kind of like Alucard from Castlevania. I'd smash. So, also, chat, you can engage with this as well. You can say smash or pass in response to these. He's a vampire too. Smash harder, smash into the fucking sun. Yes, yes, please. Okay, everyone, everyone's in agreement. Okay, smash, smash, smash. Fulgrim, uh, Empress Children Primark.
The silver hair, though. I'm trying not to overthink this. Smash. Magnus the Red, uh, Thousand Suns Primark. Pass. Not for me. The, the, the whole Roman Emperor get up is just like, no. A Roman Emperor slash like kind of Egyptian aspect is, I don't know. I know it doesn't hit my brain the same way, but uh, pass. Conrad Kurz, uh, Night Lord's Primark, smash. Smash. Come on. You know I've got a weakness for sad goth boys. Smash. The Night Haunter, smash. Smash, smash, smash. Uh, Kato Sicarius uh, from Ultramarines. Mm, pass. Pass. That. No, pass. Uh, Sister Superior Amalia Novena um, from Sisters of Battle. I mean, she'd take me to church and, like, pray the sin away afterwards, but I'd still smash. Silver hair. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. S smash. <laughs> okay, I'm glad we're kind of on the same page about a lot of these guys. Because, uh, I mean, the sisters of battle. Yes. Smash. Okay, Commissar Severina Rain from the Imperial Guard. The uniform's doing something. Also, like, she knows how to wield a sword and a gun. Smash. Yes, yes please. Smash. She wouldn't spend- I have a feeling she strikes me as the kind of person that you would smash, but she wouldn't spend the night. Like, once it's done, she is out. <laughs> smash. Unnamed Commander, Death Corpse of Krieg. Pass. Like, I, I, I could appreciate a mask. Um, I don't know. Picking up sketchy vibes. I don't trust myself being alone with you. Pass. Uh, Eldrad Uthran, uh, from the Eldar. Mmm. Why do I have a feeling like if we were going to smash, I'd be judged the entire way through? Or just like red to filth? Like I, mm, I would say pass. Cause the thing is like, no, I would just kind of feel like I, it, we would start to, but then I just kind of slowly put my clothes on and just leave. I'd just be like, no, this was, this was weird. I thought maybe, but no, pass. Yeah, like he would compare you to an ex or something, say something really unsexy that would just like kill the mood. So, sorry, Eldred. Pass. <coughs> Uthar the Destined from the Leagues of Vatan. Pass. No. Pass. Uh. Drawn Grammaticus, Imperial Agent. Hmm. Pass. Yeah, pass. Uh, Commander Shadow Sun from the Tau. Now, the Tau don't really do anything for me. Like, no. I think for me, it's the lack of a nose. Like, I know they're an alien race and all that, but. It's the lack of a nose that I find really distressing. Like, there's not even like a kind of Voldemort like snake nose action going on. Like, no, that's a pass for me. Uh, Constantine Valdor from the Custodies. Pass. No. I have a feeling he would call me a slur and then backhand me across the room. I'd pass. 
<laughs> Lilith has Prax from the Drakari. Um, respectfully smash. Respectfully or disrespectfully smash. It would hurt, but I'd still smash. Yeah, smash by. You wouldn't- I wouldn't smash. She would do the smashing. <laughs> Is anyone keeping track? No one's keeping track, we're just having fun tonight. Ah, oh, thank you for the hydro check, Z. Alright. Next one. Gideon Ravnor from the Inquisition. Pass. Because I have a feeling that this guy just works all the time. He doesn't smash at all. And so, no. I have a feeling like if it was gonna, if, if smash was gonna happen, it would just be awkward and painful and kind of sad. So, I'll uh, pass. Pass. Remleys, I'm gonna kick your fucking ass. Why? <sighs> Remleys. You're my friend. I can't just. <sighs> As a friend. I would respectfully, you're a wonderful friend. I love you. Pass. Your avatar. Maybe smash. Sassy Nurgling from the Nurgle Demons. Pass and kick into the fucking sun. I would, I would punt that little shit into one of the many suns. Like, <laughs> like poor. <laughs> Don't kick the baby. Kick the baby! Just right into the sun. No. No, no, no. Ragnar Blackmane from the Space Wolves. Ooh. I do like me a Viking. Smash. I have a feeling he's also maybe got like a primal thing going on. I could get behind that. Smash. Smash. You'll get ravaged. Oh, uh, uh, to be fair, I, I said I'd smash on um, uh, the lovely, lovely Lilith. Uh, so, yeah, smash. Uh, Veronica uh, Salath from the Sisters of Silence. Hmm. The thing is. If they're making no noise, I uh, I don't know if I would. Smash, but I think like I uh, smash, but I would do the pillow talking afterwards. It's okay, sweetie. Uh, Elizabeth Beckwin from the Inquisition. Mm. I would say pass because she's the, again I don't know the stories behind any of these characters except for Remley's a little bit um, but she strikes me as that person who like is super into church like super into church I'm talking like Bev from um, uh, Midnight Mass levels where you can tell it's from a place of like insecurity and like self-doubt as well as like complete like devotion to that so no because smashing is a sin and uh, she would not allow that to happen so pass big Big, big, big pass. Carl Jericho, independent bounty hunter. Smash. 
I'd fix the hair smash. Smash, though. Again, this guy would not, like... It is just like a one and done thing. I could imagine like it just like the moment it's done, he's just like out the window again or like guards are coming rushing into the room and he's getting like thrown out the window. I can fix him. I can make him worse. <laughs> no, he wouldn't call. It would be a full on like bar, like hookup kind of thing. Mm. Still smash though. <clears throat> Grendel, Grendelson, independent bodyguard. I'm sorry, Grendel, but pass. No. You look like you have amazing abs, rocking shoulders, and a hell of a gun. Pass, though. Commissar Gaunt from the Imperial Guard. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna say pass. I'm gonna say pass. Again, guy looks like he's either like super into his work and does not relax at all, or he call me something disgusting, disgusting, and then backhand me, and I'm no, I'm not into that. No, 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 pass. Hang on. <coughs> Fabius Bile of the Emperor's Children. Hmm, pass. Pass, not for me. Hard pass. Gazgul Thracker from the Orcs. Okay, chat, what's your reaction to this? Like, I think there will be smashing, I agree, but just not in the way that this game is being played. I would say pass. Because I know it would end violently one way or another, and I would want to survive this encounter. Uh, yeah. Pass. Sorry. Uh, unnamed Magnus from the Gene Stealer Cult. Hmm. I would say pass. Because especially if, like, again, I don't know, like, a lot of the context of this, but Gene Stealer, it makes me feel like I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night to see her, like, cutting my hair off and just being like, shh, this is for the greater good. Pass. Pass. And she from the towel. Again, like, the claws kind of doing something, but, um, it's, it's the lack of, like, a, a, a nose, really. Like, I could tell it's there a bit more in this art in particular. But m maybe if, like, we were doing ayahuasca or weed, like, really psychedelic weed, and it was, like, a transcend, like, amazing experience that just, like, defies the limitations of humanity, then maybe. Maybe. Typically, like, the towel don't really do anything for me, but it could be something if, like... Both of us were kind of like in, like having a kind of out of body experience or something like that. <laughs> 50 50 a bit. Okay, now we're going. Okay. Uh, Shalaxi Hellbane from the Slanesh uh, Greater Demons. Um, smash. S -s smash. Those abs, though. <laughs> Absolute heresy, but smash. <coughs> smash, smash. Yes, yes, please and thank you. Because, like, he even has horns you can hold on to. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Scarlet, we need to have a word. Um, Vashtor from Chaos Undivided. Hmm. I would say pass, because looking at his skin and those legions, I don't want to see what the rest of him looks like underneath that chest plate. Pass. 
Pass, usually like horns and wings and claws, like fuck yes, I love cool monsters, but it's the um, eyes without eyelids and it's the sores on the skin that are kind of giving me pause. Sorry, pass. Trays in the infinite from the Necrons. Z, I told you there'd be Necrons in here one way or another. Smash. I, I, I would still smash. That is a power pose. My lovelies, that is a fucking power pose. That is asking you to straddle, like, uh, getting too carried away. Smash. Belladonna de Escher from House Escher. I love the kind of, like, I don't know if the white hair is, like, at the back is part of the headdress, but, um... Hmm. Smash. I would smash. Because, like, she she strikes me as a girl box. Like, she knows. She knows what she's doing, so smash. Nork Dead Dog from Astra Militarum. <laughs> pass. Like, the guys, go good taste in cigars, I hope, but pass. Not for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Pass on Nork. Urian Rak uh, Rakarth um, from the Jukari. Now hear me out, chat. Hear, he he hear me out. He he chat, hear me out. Four arms, though. Chat, hear me out. Four arms, though. And they're the Drukari. Like, they know how to fuck, and they know how to fuck good. And four arms, though. Uh, smash and then run as fast as I fucking can. Okay. Let's let let's keep going. Oh, Scarlet, why, why? The Swarm Lord from the Tyranids. Pass. Pass. N uh, no, no, no. I know I just said the thing about four arms though, but no, that would not be a good time for anyone. No, but four arms, four strong arms. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. Um, pass. I'm sorry. Pass. Oh, what the fuck? No! The hood from the Xenos. I mean, Scarlet did warn us that it was going to go from fine to worse. The, the, the sound, though, as they walk. No. No, no, no. If that's the sound that they make when they walk, what's the sound they make when... Pass. Hard pass. Hard, hard pass, no. And with that horrifying conclusion, and this concludes this Smash or Pass celebration for reaching 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. I hope you had a good time, Stephanie. I absolutely did. A last hearty congratulations, and here's to the next milestone. Chat, can I get a huge round of applause for Scarlet Novella and also for Remley's 40k theories for putting this um, list together. <coughs> Excuse me. And a quick stretch from Hayden. Thank you. 
Ah, thank you, thank you. And a hydrate check as well. Wonderful, thank you so much. I'd like to, Scarlet, I'd like to hear your answers for this list. Well, who knows? I'm, I'm sure, like, as she was putting it together, that she had her own thoughts on, like, her own judgments, but that, that's her. And I've said my, my, I stand by what I said. Alrighty, and here we are. Back at Q&A. And once again, a huge thank you to the amazing, as always, Scarlet Novella for putting that list together. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Um, alrighty, so, um, for the next 40 minutes or so, we're going to go through... Let me just check something. Uh, yeah, for the next hour or so, um, we're going to go through and answer some questions. So... I can ref confirm all the weird ones were Remy's idea, Lamel. <laughs> oh, sure. Way to def deflect the blame. Like, I'm sure you proposed at least one of those. One of those weird ones. Come on. I know you. But, S Scarlet, thank you again for putting that list together. And, um... Let us uh, proceed with answering some questions. So, um, if you have already asked a question earlier tonight, and I've uh, from my uh, patrons and uh, Twitch subs on my Discord, um, let the others, uh, other people, have a turn of asking questions. But feel free to ask away. I am going to kind of jump between us answering questions that I got on uh, YouTube in response to uh, my uh, announcement video for this Q and A, and. Um, uh, the ones in chat. So, if you have a question you've been wanting to ask me, feel free to post it now and don't forget about the giveaway in case you haven't entered yet. <coughs> Alrighty, uh, I'm gonna jump over I'm going to start on a question that I got on uh, YouTube from Eddie Hackleton. Do you like acting as a dragon? I love doing uh, my the primal kind of growls and stuff like that, I'm not going to lie. Saitara is also just like a fun character to write for. Um, especially when it was uh, not the most recent chapter, but the one before that where it was the jailbreak one. And I just had so much fun writing this character that was just like so... It's just so proud. But also being like, it's not like I like you or anything, but Barker. But I love doing all the growls and stuff like that. And especially when it got to the end of that uh, chapter, um, getting to like go full on dragon mode was so much fun. I'm not going to lie. So yes, I do very much like acting like a dragon. And jumping over to the chat um, <clears throat> from uh, Zanch the Carmina. Now that you've wrapped up Tangled in the Monstrous Wilds, do you have any I new ideas for a big story to, s story to start up the new year? If so, can we get a teaser of any sort for theme or, or character? Otherwise, which stories that are ongoing do you see yourself finishing or at least are looking the most forward to continuing next? Um, that's a very good question. Um, <coughs> I definitely want to write um, more stuff uh, with Glasha and more stuff with Mimi. Um, I do have an idea... Or kind of like a rough kind of endpoint uh, for the for Night Angel. I need to come up with a name for that series because um, now it's like three chapters long, and I, they need to be put in chronological order. So I do have a solid idea for maybe what I want the end of Night Angel to to be, but I don't know if I want to like write the next chapter as like being the end of it, or if I want to have like a chapter in between that a chapter or two between that before getting to the end of it you know what i mean so i think in the new year you can expect to see more glasha the thing is i haven't really thought of um uh any like new like new things to do with her or like a sense of a through line of a plot in the same way that tangled in the monstrous wilds it kind of came together as a nice kind of rising arc of a story uh, not a voice redeem, but have some warm tea instead. Tea check. Thank you so much, Jen. Mm. I did say I was going to make some more tea. In a bit, but I think I'm okay for now. 
Mm -mm. Excuse me. Um, so I think you can expect uh, some more of Glasha, some more of Mimi, because I've got some good ideas of what I want to do with Duskgate. Um, just because dus with Duskgate and uh, my Vampire Biker series, it's a series that's going to have quite a few other characters in it that I would want uh, guest uh, voice actors and ASMRs to play. So that's a bit tricky because I need to like get the scripts in early enough to get it, um, to send it to them and they have to get their lines back to me. So those take a bit more planning um, and a bit more work. But So you can expect more of Glasha, more of Mimi and some more of Night Angel definitely in the coming year. Um, I'm not sure if there's like any new series with like new characters that I've kind of been thinking about. There was one I was maybe considering, but I didn't really have a strong idea that felt like originally my own story. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question, uh, essentially, Kamina. Sorry that I can't give away too much, um, but I think those are three characters you can definitely expect to see more of in the new year. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, I'll just jump over to the question that I got on YouTube from uh, Cesar Ruiz. Um, if you became a VTuber, what would your avatar be and what would be the lore? Congratulations, my friend. Keep up the good work and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you too, Cesar, um, for back in November. Um, my VTuber model, it would be the Seraph of Stories with like my six wings, my beautiful blue dress and everything like that. Uh, she has her own lore, her own backstory and everything like that. Um, not too much that I want to make public at the moment. Um, I have thought about if I wanted to, like, adapt my online persona, um, the Seraph of Stories, into VTuber format. But the thing is, if I wanted to have it executed to the level of detail and, like, rigging that I would want it to, like, because the thing is, all of her wings would have to be, like, fully animated. And she's got so many details. The roses, the hair, um, facial expressions, like, the bits of armor and her outfit and things like that. It would cost thousands thousands that I'm trying to save up towards eventually being able to buy my own place or like get a bigger apartment and it's just not feasible for me at the moment so um hopefully that answers your question uh Caesar <coughs> uh from Sam how are you so adorable and precious I just I am what I am I just try my best to be a good person and I'm very, very lucky that I look the way that I do, that I've got uh, the wonderful genetics from my mum and dad and I just try to be a good person and I, I don't know, it's just like, my, I, I'm just like this. I don't know how to answer that. Oh, uh, but thank you so much, Sam. <clears throat> um... Uh, oh, I did get a question from Wolf Warrior uh, that they posted on YouTube. Um, if you could choose what monster girl you'd, uh, if you could choose what monster girl would you be? Um, there's lots of monster girls out there. Uh, does an Old Testament uh, angel monster girl count? Maybe. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That counts. So maybe like an Old Testament angel with like all the bands with all the eyes and everything like that. Like uh, a, a little bit more like um, celestial and kind of horrifying. Maybe with like the wings over the eyes or something like that. But that kind of monster girl, I think. Um, but thank you so much for your question. <coughs> uh, next question is from Z. Uh, Zenook, have you ever considered to GM a game? I would love to GM a game. The thing is, I know they are a massive uh, commitment of time and uh, my schedule is just so chaotic at the moment. I want to run a game, whether it's like... Uh, I could typically imagine myself definitely running a, uh, a game of Dungeons and Dragons at some point, but I just don't have the time to put it together at the moment. I would love to at some point, um, and, uh, but who knows what the future holds. I really hope I can though. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. Alrighty. Um, so next question um, uh, from over on YouTube is from the Archangel of Stories. Uh, well, given the occasion uh, time is 40k related, is a 40k related question. Uh, it's rather a two-parter. Uh, who's your favorite Primarch in terms of character, and who's your favorite race in 40k? Um, probably S Sanguinius, maybe. He's he's pretty with Smash. Um, much Smash. Uh, probably Sanguinius. And uh, favorite race in 40k? I have to go with the Slaneshi. Come on. Do they count the demons? And so they're kind of like, uh, maybe they don't count. Okay, uh, probably the, Dr the Drukari then, the Dark Elves, because pointy and stabby. Yes, 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 yes. Alrighty. Uh, but thank you so much for your question, Archangel of Stories. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep balance between all the questions that are coming in. Um, do do do. Uh, Granite Planet. Well, my only question for you right now is this. Is there a specific character of yours you'd like me to draw next? I wanted to ask in case there was a character you really wanted to see drawn in fan art. Honestly, it's up to, like, whatever inspires you the most. Um, I would maybe love, uh, to see some fan art, uh, like, maybe of, uh, Queen Kava and Silka, but I'm very much aware that their character designs are a little tricky and complicated. Um, Dryders can be a bit tricky with all the legs and everything. Uh, so yeah, I would love to see fan art of Kava and Silka, because they're, they're, they're wonderful. Um, also, like, Glasha, because it's Glasha, and I love her so much. Um, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for your question, Granite. But honestly, whatever, like, inspires you. Uh, Elizabeth Johns did ask, um, uh, how, uh... Uh, sorry, Elizabeth Johns asked, uh, I do have a question on your channel. We explore in so many different worlds. I was wondering you, how you come up with them. Again, congrats on 40k. You earned it. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, I did kind of answer that at the start of the stream, um, when it was asked, like, how do I come up with stories? Um, when it comes to, like, more on the aspect of, like, building up worlds, it's a fine line between, like, adding little flourishing details of things like describing, like, a particular flower that grows in the region or coming up with uh, a name for a nearby town or something like that. It's like those little things that even though you're only with my character for a certain amount of time, I want you to feel like that you're transported to another world as much as I can without feeling like you're getting an exposition dump. So it's just little fine details that help make it feel more immersive. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question, Elizabeth. Um, I think most of it can be answered in like the, st uh, the start of the stream when um, I was asked about how I come up with ideas. Do do do. Uh, do do do. Uh, from the Louvre, is Space Marine 2 a game you stream? Um, I have not played uh, Space Marine 2. I would have to check it out and uh, see if it's my style, but I have not streamed it yet. And I don't think I've played it yet either, so I'll definitely check it out. Thank you so much, Louvre. Um, uh, from YouTube, from uh, Danan, uh, Dayan Inki... Inikathon? Anikaton? Uh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, holy cow, Alpha Boost and 40k Theories fan, uh, yet ran into you randomly and subscribed independently. Did you play Saint Celestine? No. Um, a lot of people think that, because there's a video, I think it's on, yeah, it's on Alpha Boost's channel, uh, where it's like, um, Saint Celestine, she comes down and it's like, the, Saint Celestine has returned, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people think I voiced Saint Celestine herself. I did not. Um, that is another wonderfully talented voice actress. I'm actually... I'm actually in the crowd, shrieking out, I love you, Celestine. I'm one of the fangirls freaking out about Celestine's return. I am in that video, but I just had a smaller role. Um, but I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> yes, I played one of the simps. Simps for Angel Mommy. Um, but thank you so much, uh, Dane, for your question. Uh, do do do. Uh, okay, from uh, Sam. Uh, real question: What is a gem you're looking forward to or would love to stream? Uh, what? Sorry, what is a game you're looking forward to or would love to stream? Well, as of this morning, when I woke up, 
and I saw what had been announced at the Game Awards. When, when I saw the trailer for Hades 2, just... I always like to start my day out on a good note. You know, sending out those positive energy, like those good vibes for the day. And I felt like my sinus is clear, my crops have been watered, and I was so happy. So I am very excited. Hopefully it'll come out next year. I know Early Access is coming out next year, but I hope the full game does. I'm very excited to play Hades 2 on stream. Because I had so much fun playing it, uh, was it this year? Yeah, it was like earlier this year or late last year, I think. Um, I had so much fun playing the first one. So, yes. Yes, please. Hades 2, I would have to say. Very excited for that. <coughs> uh, do do um, okay, uh, thank you so much for your question, Sam. Our next question from uh, to Silvio Silence. Do the thorns of the blue roses wrapped around your avatar's thighs not hurt a bit? They might dig in a little bit, but um, every rose has a thorn in its side. I can't really think of any other way other, uh, to answer that other than that. So thank you so much for the question to Silvio. Um, I will just say, uh, maybe uh, put a pause on questions for now, because I'm going to try and catch up with the chat, because I'm just coming to the end of the YouTube questions. And um, I'll answer this one last one from uh, my YouTube questions, and then I'll jump over to um, uh, you guys in chat. Um, from Deforest Tapan. So when do you plan to make more Eldar videos? The thing is, I get this question a lot. Um, and I, I just need to have like a copy and paste response that I can use. Pretty much, I'm not sure if it was like this year or last year that Games Workshop came up with that came out with their announcement about their changing policies on fan content. That's the reason that Alpha Booster uh, stopped or put pause on um, uh, if the Emperor had a text to speech device. And uh, yeah. Like, my stuff is fine on my channel for now, but I don't want to risk uh, catching Game Workshop's attention by accident um, by posting any new Warhammer content, like, because I think it would, like, it would definitely be under the category of, like, fan content, but I just worry that about getting demonetized or getting those videos taken, taken down by Games Workshop, and I just don't want to step on any toes when I'm fine just having them being on my archive of videos, but I'm not going to produce any new ones, if that makes sense. Mm -mm. But thank you so much for your question, DeForest Tavern. And now we'll jump back over to the game chat. Uh, not the game chat, the main chat. Hang on. <coughs> Alrighty. Just getting this ready so I can see. Oh shit. Uh Okay, I think I accidentally reset the chat. Um, so I can't like scroll down it uh, kind of refresh it So if you have questions you've been wanting to ask me and I haven't answered it yet, please put in the chat now. Uh, I'm so sorry about that I don't know what happened. I didn't mean to <coughs> Excuse me Do 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 Oh my god, smash and pass with Hades, but smash and uh, marry, you can only marry once. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, that would break my heart, though. They're all so hot. Do, do, do. Uh, okay, so from Hayden, when selecting a game you haven't played or purchased for streaming, do you watch short clips of other streamers playing it to get the feel for its suitability, or you just re-up on it? Um, if it's a game that is just coming out, I will kind of go with my gut feeling of, like, feeling at, okay, is this, like, one, 
fitting the vibe of my streams. Two, uh, would I genuinely enjoy it? Three, how long is it? Um, because I've played other, I've played like Darkest Dungeon and um, Hades went on for a very, very long time. And those were games that went, like, they were played over multiple weeks. I think I played Darkest Dungeon for like six months or something. Um, so it also depends on like how long it is. If I'm like, okay, there's this new game that I really want to play coming out in like three weeks. I just need something that I can play for like two weeks. I'll look up to see how long a particular game is to think like, okay, I can roughly cut that into like two streams or something. Um, sometimes it's just like a game I'm really excited for. Um, but then there's other games that'll be like, you know what, I just want to play this for myself. And I want to like relax fully, not have to worry about makeup or like interacting with chat. I just want to take my time with it and meander around it and do it my own way. So. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, but yeah, like for example, like Resident Evil uh, Village. I didn't have like the PC cap capabilities in order to play it and stream it at the same time. Um, so I had to wait until got that sorted. Um, but then I knew absolutely when the DLC came out I was going to play it. Um, like I know for sure when Hades 2 comes out I really want to stream that. Um, but then there's other games where I'm like, okay my play style may not work as well for streams. Um, because I might meander my way around everywhere. It might not be as engaging or entertaining for you guys. Um, uh, so yeah, I kind of like... Sometimes it'll be like, oh, this... Or it'll be like, oh, this is one of my favorite games. And, you know, I want to like uh, share this experience with you guys of like watching me play like something that I'm really passionate about. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> oh, my voice, I think it's starting to go. I'm sorry. Oh, that's weird. Sorry, my chat is being... My chat box is just being so weird tonight. I'm sorry. Ah. <laughs> Uh, okay, but I think that's, uh, that kind of answers your question. Thank you so much, Hayden. I hope that answers everything. Uh, do do do. Uh, from, uh, Game Brain Jagras, I got a question. Was, uh, Saitaro, Glasha, or the Gorgon inspired by tabletop RPG encounters? They weren't inspired by particular encounters, but, um, they were definitely inspired by my love of, um, Dungeons & Dragons. Absolutely. Um, fun fact, I've never actually played an orc character in a game before, but I would kind of really want to play Glasha at some point, uh, as a game, as a character in a game. Uh, and then I could probably think about what her build would be and everything. Uh, do do do. Uh, so yeah, they were definitely inspired by my love of D&D, so I was already familiar with, like, what blue dragons are like. And blue dragons, like, their biggest thing is they're, like, the most prideful out of all the chromatics. Um, almost on the same level, if not greater, than red dragons. Um, uh, so, they weren't inspired by particular encounters, but they were inspired by my love of Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you so much for your question, Chakras. Uh, do, do, do. Steph runs a D&D campaign with all of her OCs and NPCs. I mean, to be fair, isn't that every Dungeons & Dragons game? So just like, you get all your cool OCs and you put them all together in a big pit and then you watch your friends kill them or fall in love with them. Or sometimes one or the other in whatever order. <laughs> Uh, so yes, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I'm so sorry that uh, it kind of spaced out and um, it refreshed and I lost some of the other questions that you guys asked me, so I'm really sorry about that. Because we still have about 35 minutes uh, on the timer for the giveaway, so feel free to ask your questions, guys. Hmm. Mm. Just getting those last sips of tea. A 
And guys, don't worry, my voice is doing okay. It was just a little, it's starting to get a little bit rough, but I should be good for like the last um, 30, 40 minutes or so. Oh, no, you guys are still fine for the raffle. It was just the chat with like um, your questions uh, refreshed. And so I'm really sorry about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, hold on, what was the last question before the chat refreshed on you? Um, the last question that I could see was... Uh, uh, I think it was... Um, do, do, do. Uh, I think it was that one from Hayden. Um, uh, it was the one from Hayden asking about uh, when selecting games for streams. So I kind of, I have some of the chat that it was happening above it, but I just can't see any other questions from there. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, okay, from Hayden. Okay, I'll go again. Ultimate D&D table, real or fictional people. You, five other players, and a DM. Go. Um, I would love to play with uh, Brett and Lee Mulligan, uh, Matt Mercer, um, I'm not sure if, maybe because I'm not sure how he feels about, like, uh, uh, not sure how he feels about Eddie now, but I would love, um, to play with, uh, Joseph Quinn, who plays, uh, Eddie Munson in, uh, the most recent season of Stranger Things, because when he was playing with, um, uh, Davey Walters as a kind of a promotional thing for the new season with um, uh, s some of the other amazing actors and actresses um, from the series like that I, he looked like he was having a lot of fun so I would lo love to play with him as well um, for the dungeon master I would want Brendan Lee Mulligan to be the dungeon master uh, so playing with Matt Mercer Joseph Quinn um, real fictional people who else? Fuck. Yaskir from The Witcher. I want him to be the most self-insert bard ever in the game. I think also he would come up with some of the best jams, let's be fair. Um, doo -doo -doo. Who else? I need to pick two more. Um, hmm, let me think. Binary Games, thank you so much for the follow. You are now one of my lovely lost tales, and you are welcome at the Blue Rose Respite anyway. Uh, sorry, anytime. My brain's all over the place tonight. Take a seat. Welcome, Binary. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, two more. I need to think. Come on, brain. I would love to also play, um... Uh, I would love to also play with um, Ashley Johnson. I would love Ashley Johnson to also be at the table. And uh, also, like I, I've seen a bit of his streams. Um, Neil Newborn, who's the I, we sometimes raid his streams after our, um, I finish my stream uh, on Twitch. He's the actor and motion capture artist for um, characters like uh, Heisenberg. He was also it, uh, from Resident Evil Village. He was also in uh, Detroit Become Human. Fantastic, amazingly talented actor. Um, but he also uh, has a bit of experience with, I think he plays, he would sometimes play Warhammer on stream. Um, but I would be very curious to see what he would be like at D&D. So I think that's kind of my rough, uh, like rundown of who I would like to play with. Of course, I'm probably going to think of like other people like just now thinking like Erika Ishii would also be a ton of fun to play with. So honestly, well, that's more like thinking like celebrities as well. Like I would love to invite like all of my friends to the table as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty, well thank you so much for your question, Hayden. Uh, uh, from Android, uh, uh, I don't create, uh, on game, one thing I wanted to ask was how do you define good voice acting? What details do you have to pay attention? Um, Android, very good question. 
Believability, I think, is one of the big things about voice acting. Because the thing is, with voice acting, you're repeating the same line again and again and again. And it has to sound like it's not you reading a line. It has to sound like the character is saying what they want to say in that moment. Like, even in anime and stuff like that, when you have, like, uh, when the, you have scenes that are just so over the top and so dramatic, it still has to feel like it's the character saying that, not you saying that line for the 50th time because, like, the ADR director just wasn't, like, happy with the way it was being said. So, because you do get some performances where it's just like, you can tell they weren't putting their all into it. You know, they were bored, they were tired, and they just weren't putting like all their heart and soul into the performance that it felt like it deserved. Like, if you think about voice performances in, for like, uh, I don't know, like say uh, companions in Dragon Age Inquisition, you know, some of those lines, they feel like, you know, they're being spoken just to you. Mavanan. And it just, it, you feel that connection between yourself as the player and them, the character. They've probably had to take that line 10 times. And each time they had to do it, had to sound like a little bit different and still just as sincere. <clears throat> so. <coughs> um. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, uh, Android. So I think that's kind of like a general kind of thing when it comes to good, air quotes, good voice acting, because I hesitate to call anything like bad voice acting. Like there's some early 2000s anime dubs that were like, let's be honest, kind of bad. Um, but I think nowadays believability um, is one of the big things when it comes to <coughs> voice acting. <coughs> Because the thing is, you also have to make it feel like, you know, if you think about, again, taking anime, for example, you see these massive dynamic fights, these characters just roaring and charging at each other. And, you know, when you're physically moving, you sound like you're, like, breathing and you, like, you feel the weight of, like, what they're doing, like, those sweeping movements. When you're recording it, you're stuck in a booth. So you have to have all of that heaviness in your chest at the same time. And you want to feel like the proper weight of the words that they're saying. So I hope that answers your question, Android. Thank you so much. That was a very good question. Uh, from the Wolf Warrior, would you like an Eddie Munson figure for next Christmas? Um, if you're talking about like the Funko Pop ones, I've thought about it. But honestly, they're so expensive at the moment because he's so popular at the moment. Um... I don't know, I don't really do Funko Pops, and sometimes figures of, like, actors or, like, characters from TV shows can look a little bit weird to me. Um, it's a bit of an uncanny valley sort of thing. Um, but, so, thank you so much for asking, but I think I'm good, thank you. Uh, excuse me. Ah, <coughs> uh, do 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 uh, from Game Brain Jackrus. Oh yeah, do you like critical role characters? I absolutely do. I ha I have the figure of Molly Mock, uh, in my bedroom, um, on one of my bookshelves, and I love it. I love it so much. Like my um rotating wallpaper on uh my other uh desktop is um of like all the critical role characters. I love critical role. I've seen campaigns one and two. I haven't caught up on campaign three at the moment. Um, I did love um. Uh, Exandria Calamity, though, that was spine-chillingly good. Just, just uh, so good. Just, just so good. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yes, huge, huge fan of Critical Role. I would love to potentially even be at the table someday as, a, like, a guest player. That would be amazing. But we'll see how things go. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, alrighty. Ooh. Hydrate. Check from Jen. Sorry, I didn't see that before. Mm. And one from Clansonator. Thank you. Mm -mm. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. They need to do an updated remaster of the first two Dragon Age games. That would be amazing. Yes, please. <coughs> 
Uh, James Phillip, uh, did you see the Game of the Year awards and what was your top picks? Um, I don't really watch like a lot of award shows live. Um, I don't really get super invested like, oh, this game has to win Game of the Year. I was kind of hoping that Cult of the Lamb would win Best Indie, but I totally understand why Stray won it. So, because Stray's an awesome game as well, to be fair. And Rift Switch, thank you so much for the follow. You are now one of my lovely Lost Tales. And you are welcome at the Blue Rose Respite anytime. Thank you so much for joining us. <coughs> I I know I, I shouldn't apologize for it, but I feel bad that I'm coughing so much towards the end of the stream. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you so much for your question, Philip. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Uh, from Game Print Chakras, one of the most believable lines I heard from you was when Saitaro tries to say something, but the listener scratches her chin. <laughs> like, sometimes I'll record a line um, for an ASMR tale, and, um, like, I don't know, I'll just, like, get perfectly into that headspace, or, you know, something will just kind of slip out organically. And a lot of the time, it'll be, like, reactions to things. Because the thing is, I have to think in my head of, like, how I'm reacting to a moment. Like, um when a uh, sight owl and a uh, list listener is a uh, they're going through the um the prison and they're on their way out and she's just like i am the most humble and you have to like and then the listener interrupts them but of course you're not saying anything so i just have to have that pause of just like and i'm the mo i don't know what you're talking about i'm the most humble of anything i and then i ha kind of have to physically react that way and so then you get like that nice kind of natural closing and so i don't know when when I was recording that, if I, like, just, I don't know. I think I even, like, got into the full headspace of kind of, like, trying to, like, imagine, like, what does a cat look like when they get, like, chin scratches? Like, mm, all good vibes. Ah, <laughs> uh, from Hayden, are you looking forward to watching season two of Vox Machina? I absolutely am. I originally, I backed the Kickstarter for uh, season one. I'm so proud of them. Honestly, that entire team works so hard. I was watching, I've been watching Critical Role since Campaign 1 was streaming and when they were still uh, with Geek and Sundry. Um, so just seeing them come so far is absolutely amazing. <laughs> and they absolutely deserve it. <coughs> just hoping that my makeup isn't going all over the place. Uh, from Echo Fail, have you watched the new Wednesday Adams show on Netflix? And if so, what are your thoughts? No spoilers, please. Um, I can't say anything because I haven't watched it yet. Um, I have seen, like, some clips out of context and stuff like that. So I haven't watched Wednesday yet. All I know is that, um, Gwendolyn Christie, who I... Be still my heart. I love her so much. Gwendolyn Christie... And you've probably seen it as well. Like, there's some moments, like some snippets of the show that I've seen clips of, then I'm like... Let's just, let's just get you uh, a dark wig and the hat. Because she could pull off playing Lady Dimitrescu, I think. Because you, if you've watched Sandman and you've seen her as Lucifer, like, she was wearing platform shoes and stuff like that to give her that even greater height. And they could very easily just do some minor adjustments to, like, make her even more physically imposing. But honestly, the energy she carries, she could pull off playing Lady Dimitrescu. Just, yes. Like, I love her so much. It makes me so happy to see her doing so well. Um, but yeah, sorry, Echo, I haven't seen it yet. But thank you so much for your question. If they do uh, remake Dragon Age uh, Origins, I need to play it. Yeah, that would be really cool. I, it wouldn't surprise me if after they release um, uh, the new uh, Dragon Age game, um, Dreadwolf, um, they then plan on making a re-release a, a re of Origins and Dragon Age 2. Um, because I, I think, I'm not sure what interview it was, but I think they were saying, like, with the new game, with, um, Dreadwolf, they were trying to make it so that you don't have to be familiar with the previous games in order to play it. 
But if they wanted to go to a similar thing that like Capcom and Konami are doing with like remaking their older games um, for a modern audience, like, come on guys. Origins is so good, please. Like, please remake it, that would be awesome. Sam, think, uh, Sam asks, have you considered playing the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV with an expanded free trial which you can play through? <laughs> what the hell happened? I blacked out there. I tried playing a little bit of the Final Fantasy MMORPG. The thing is, I don't have the time to commit to playing MMORPGs at length because like, it's, it's something to make the most out of it. You have to commit to on a regular basis of playing it and I just, I just don't have that time. I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't have that time. <laughs> oh, my, my, I'm glad we're on the same page. I'm glad we're on the same page when it comes to Gwendolyn Christie, because they're just... Be, be still my heart. And also, if you haven't watched Sandman, go, go watch Sandman, please. It, it, it's really cool and you'll really like it and it, it it's just really really good you guys so if you if you're looking for something to watch it's not necessarily like festive for this time of year but if you want something fun to watch and you like kind of slightly darker fantasy stuff and you're okay with like darker themes and some there's one episode that gets pretty gory if you're okay with all that go watch Sandman go watch the Sandman it's really fucking good <coughs> Do to do, just checking for questions. Okay, I'm all caught up. Um, okay, uh, from Shadow Gundam. Speaking of Capcom remakes, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ah. <clears throat> uh, from Shadow Gundam. Speaking of Capcom remakes, are you excited for the Resident Evil 4 remake? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I am very excited. Um, when it comes out, I'll probably just, like, check it to see, like, that it's okay for streaming. I imagine I wouldn't have any issues with it, but I would very much like to stream it. Yes, please. Yes, please, and thank you. Um, do we have a release date for Resident Evil 4 remake yet? Because we had the Capcom showcase uh, a few weeks ago. A few weeks. It feels like forever ago now. But I'm not sure if they've done a release date yet. March, I think. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. But yeah, definitely would love to stream it. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, Rosen Online, where can I watch it? You can watch Sandman. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Uh, excited for the second season? Knowing what happens in the comic, I sure am. I'm very excited. Like... The thing is, I've wanted to read the comics for a very, very, very long time. Um, but I haven't, I hadn't yet had the time or the money to like get all the volumes. And when I saw they had the beautiful hardback editions, I really wanted to get those. But I just couldn't afford it and I don't have the shelf space for them. But I was very much like, okay, when I get, I, I think now I might start getting like the individual issues or, you know, like the slimmer editions. And then. Um, if I can afford the big shiny editions, then I'll get them. But I think I want to start reading the comics, finally. But at the same time, I kind of don't want to get spoiled for what's going to happen in Season 2. I don't know. I, it, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, fuck. Okay, 24th of March. I think I might have put it in my calendar. That sounds familiar. Okay, so 24th of March, Resident Evil 4 remake. Fuck yes. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> he. Oh, excuse me. Uh, do you still have an Amazon wish list? I do. Um, I haven't really looked at it in a really long time, and I haven't posted it. I thought about getting um, a throne thing set up, and I started to get one put together. Like throne is the thing that a lot of content creators use instead of Amazon wish list, where like it's essentially like an Amazon wish list. Like if you wanted to support them by buying them things, like I don't know, 
uh, books or like computer graphics cards or like games and things like that, then you could go to that link and um, do it that way. I started to put a list together, but I haven't yet finished putting it together and setting everything up. So I do have a wish list, but um, I'm, I'm flying out to Australia next week. So anything that is bought from there is not going to get to me in time for Christmas. And that's totally, totally fine. Um, I might get one set up later on though. Um, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I just hadn't had the chance to get around to it. And honestly, you guys already go above and beyond with supporting me, like, on, across numerous platforms and stuff. Like, tonight you guys already did, like, amazingly with, um, renewing your subscriptions, with donating and all that good stuff. So you guys already support me in, in amazing ways, so thank you for that. Uh, do 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 Echo Vale, I've concluded that I'm stealing her height because my five foot, uh, three inch self. Oh, Echo! You're five foot three inches of badass, though! Like, I'm five foot seven. I like being five foot seven. I used to think I was five foot nine, but apparently I'm five foot seven. I used to, I, I thought I was taller, but I'm nice, kind of slightly above average height, so I like that. Uh, from Game Brain Jarquest, do you think Silka and Fern will get along well? Uh, Fern is from, uh, the most recent. Uh, campaign of Critical Role. I think Silka would have, like, she'd be a little bit uh, torn up about Fern's more um, uh, sticky fingers when it comes to, like, taking treasures and stuff. And, um, but I don't think, like, she would think too much on it. She'd just be like, oh, like, that that's a beautiful earring like oh thank you like oh that it's a lot like the earring of that person that we just spoke to okay let's keep going and like she, she's a sweetheart but she can be an airhead so i think like if she saw something happening and she'd be like wait that's a bad thing she she'd say something about that but she's she's just a precious bean she, she and i think like fern would just like give head pats and like must protect. <laughs> oh, but I think they would get along. <coughs> the Wolf Warrior, can I have a happy birthday from the Countess since this is the last stream this year and mine's next week. Uh, the pig my voice ran out, sorry. That's okay, Wolf Warrior. I'm happy to do that for you. Wolf Warrior, a most happy of birthdays to you. I trust that all of you will have a wonderful new year ahead. And thank you so much for supporting the Seraph of Stories. He. Oh, I hope that was good, Wolf Warrior. Thank you so much. Do to do. Hey, Baron Alistair, how's it going? Welcome back. Oh, thanks for the hydrate check, Jen. Mm -mm. Thank you, thank you. And guys, we are coming towards the end of tonight's stream. We've just got over uh, 10 minutes left of the giveaway. And then I'll draw the winner and we'll wrap things up. So thank you for the stretch check, Hayden. Now, if you have any last questions you want to ask me, now is the time to do so. Oh, it's all good, Baron. Better late than never. Uh, how was your spa day last week, Steph? It was really good. It was really good. Um, probably the best massage I've had in a long while. Because um, I go uh, to the gym fairly regularly and I've been doing a lot of like, um, uh, like weight training and stuff. So I got a massage that was like with hot stones that like work out all the like kinks in your muscles and stuff. And it was so good. I really needed it. And I'm glad I got it before I uh, go on vacation. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you for all the avoided sleepless nights. Like, thank you so much, Game Brain. Like, it really means a lot that people, like, find genuine comfort in my ASMR tales. Like, 
because I don't really do like sleep aid kind of videos and stuff but a lot of you seem to listen to them when you're going off to sleep or you need like something to calm down to and that really means a lot it means a lot that I'm able to help in some way Gigosh, thank you so much for the 8 month primary sub! Hey, I've been busy lately, so dropping by to congratulate you on hitting 40k, onwards to 50k in 2023. Wishing everyone a happy holiday season and see you all next year. Happiest of holidays to you too, Gigosh, and thank you so much for the amazing support. Thank you. Like, I'm already amazed that, like, I've hit uh, 41k recently, and we just seem to be going up from there which is incredible so we're definitely going to be hitting 50k next year but i'm curious to see when that's going to be <coughs> okay baron you do have a question how are you i'm doing great i'm doing good um i was genuinely worried i would have to cancel tonight's stream because i was worried how my voice was going to do but I spent the whole week resting it, taking care of it, so that then I could do tonight with you guys. And uh, I'm all good. I'm starting to get a little bit tired though, so uh, tomorrow I've got an appointment to get my hair done because I want to get like all my other things done uh, before I go away on vacation. So I'm getting my hair done tomorrow, which I'm looking forward to. And I'm just going to be nice and chill the rest of the weekend. I'm going to be busy wrapping presents for family and getting my suitcase organized and stuff. So yeah, I've got a couple of things I need to take care of, but I am done with Christmas shopping. So that is all over for me. I'm all good. And yeah, now it's just like getting the last few things organized, but I'm good. I'm good. I might have to have some tea, um, more tea later tonight before I go to bed. Um, but other than that, I'm good. Uh, any New Year's goals from Echo Vale? Oh, good question. Um, I want to definitely hit 50k on uh, YouTube. I want to hit maybe, hopefully, 2,500 followers on Twitch, I think. Um, I want to do, uh, I want to reach uh, more fitness goals. I want to run a full 15 kilometer, um, 15 kilometer run. I think I want to maybe try to do my first like actual marathon, like not a super long one, like maybe a 5k marathon. Um, and uh, I want to do um, mocap classes. I want to do mocap classes and I want to do more advanced acting classes. So I've got a couple of different goals that I want to reach, um, but I haven't yet gone out and made a list of them yet. I think I'll do that on my phone so that then I can cross them off as I achieve them. Um, but yeah, those are kind of my rough New Year's goals. Like, and I think they're all realistic and uh, obtainable. Uh, Samuel, what's your favorite song from this year? So, I'm a massive fan of a little band from Sweden called Ghost. I love Ghost so, so much. And if you have not listened to their latest album, Imperia, I highly recommend you do. I think my favorite song from this year that just there's just something about this song that just like slammed like straight into my heart it was either it was I think it was Spillways Spillways was um it's from the latest Ghost album and um I don't know it just hits so hard and it, 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 it's a good song. It's a really good song. If you like metal, but not like metal where it's like very, like you you can't really like make out the words because the vocals are very growly and very aggressive, I recommend Ghost. If you love kind of just it's sp spooky vibes, it's like metal meets Scooby-Doo music. It's great and it's wonderful and I highly recommend Ghost to everyone. Um, so yeah, I think Spillways uh, by Ghost was my favorite song of the year. Although Call Me Little Sunshine, again from the same album, is fucking great as well. And Griffwood. I really like Ghost, in case it wasn't obvious. <laughs> do, do, do. Uh, Fifty K? Nah, go big or go home. Seventy K. We'll see. We'll see. Who knows? I might hit seventy K before the end of twenty twenty three. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Stephanie, why do you shine like the sunrise on a cold day, warming us with your joy and loving vibes? Because if we were, if we are kind and polite, then the world will be right. Like, I, I work my ass off 
to get to where I am and I sacrifice a lot in order to get here and I, I won't bring the mood down or anything like that but I'm kind of of the mentality that a lot of things are unknown in what lies ahead for us of course there's goals that we want to achieve there's things we want to do but also fate could take a terrible turn and it can turn out that we might have less time on this world than we expected so I try my best to just be a little source of light in people's lives and that's why I have like close friends but I don't have a huge circle of friends but the friends that I have are very close um, and so I, so I only share that light that with people that I think are like deserving of it or get to see me like that. And the fact that you guys like come to my streams every week and you check out my videos when I post them and you take the time to tell me like that you really like them. You might even support me, uh, in a financial sense. Like I just like being a little source of light in other people's lives and there's sometimes where I feel like that light is starting to burn out, but then I'm trying to get better at taking time away to be like, hey guys, I just need to refuel and rest and then I'll be back. But the thing is, the future is unknown. And knock on wood, like, there's so many things out there that are unknown as to how much time we have in this world. And I just want to make the time that I do have on this world, I want to make things that I'm I'm proud of I want to tell stories that make me happy and that I'm proud to tell and I want to cultivate friendships that are healthy and loving and supportive and all that good stuff and yeah and just build a life for myself that I'm content with and that makes me happy and so yeah I won't get too mushy on you guys but I don't know, I, it, it's taken me a long time and like my teenage years and my 20s were really rough. But I'm finally at a point in my life where I'm just like, okay, this is who I'm going to be. And I'm really happy with who I'm going to be and who I'm becoming and who, what I'm putting my time into into myself to become. And of course, there's going to be obstacles along the way and there'll be days where I'm just like screaming and crying and like things get really rough. But I'm lucky that I've got a good circle of friends that, you know, help, like, even when that light's about to go out, they can just, like, add a little bit more to it and just help me stay stay alight as best I can, so. So, why do I shine like the sunrise on a cold day, warming us with your joy and loving vibes? Because it makes me happy. And I, I like that people enjoy the warmth that I give off, so thank you, Sam. <laughs> Do, do, do. Oh, guys, I'm, I'm just catching up to your comments. <laughs> oh, thank you for the hydrate check. Uh, yeah, I was talking for a little while there. Mm. Ah, I needed that. Thank you. And a stretch check from Clansonator. Thank you. Excuse me. Oh, Momo, you're still here. Fuck. <laughs> oh, no, you heard all that. Okay. I love you, Momo. You're a wonderful bean. I, lo I love you guys so much. But I hope you're all doing well as well. Like, um... But thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. We're just coming right to the end of the giveaway. So if you have not entered yet and you want to win a, uh, be in the running to win a Steam key for Cult of the Lamb, uh, exclamation point giveaway or one word, and we'll be drawing the winner soon. So if you have entered, please stand by because you might be the lucky winner. And I do want to quickly message you um, while I'm live so that I can get the Steam key to you ASAP. Oh, I, okay, I think chat, everyone deserves some hugs, some love, so share some love in the chat, guys. Lots of hearts, lots of smiles, all that good stuff. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah, it's getting towards the end of the night, my voice is rough. 
Uh, but yeah, I didn't want to bring down the the vibe or anything like that, but I've, I've just been through some stuff this year. It's been a rough year in some ways, but it's also been really good in some ways. Um, but yeah, some ups, some downs, but I'm very excited to see what the new year holds ahead for us. And, uh, and I hope all of you guys have a wonderful holiday ahead. Guys, we're almost at the end of the giveaway. I think I answered everyone's questions. I can't think of anyone, I, or I can't see anyone that I missed. And alrighty, so. I am closing the entries. One second. Alrighty, so the timer has run out for the entries for the um, giveaway. So, everyone stand by. If you have entered the giveaway, I will be drawing the winner now. So, who's it going to be? Who will be the lucky winner of the Steam Key for Cult of the Lamb? Zanchlu Carmina, congratulations! You are the lucky winner tonight! Uh, make yourself known in chat and I will send you the Steam Key your way. Okay, fantastic. I am going to do that right now. Uh, one second. Because uh, I just want to send it to you now. Cool, cool, cool. Congratulations, Anshley Carmina, being the lucky winner of tonight's giveaway. Okay, brilliant. So, there you go. You should be able to redeem that on Steam for your free copy of Curse of the Lamb. I had so much fun with Curse of the Lamb, and I hope you do as well. Thank you so, so much, Carmina, and congratulations. And I think with that, we are going to wrap things up for the night. It's coming up to two and a half hours. My voice is getting a little bit rough. But thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys. We answered a ton of questions. We had a great game of Smash or Pass. And again, congratulations to uh, Carmina for, um, <clears throat> uh, for being uh, the lucky winner of tonight's giveaway. Sorry. Um, my brain's all over the place tonight. Did I say something weird? I'm sorry. I'm a little sleepy. Um, but with that, I think it's time to wrap things up for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've been lurking in the shadows and you like what you've seen so far, please consider following. We would love to have you back at the Blue Rose Respite. You're welcome anytime. Be sure to check out my other socials that are in the chat right now, including my Twitter for important updates and other fun things, my ASMR tales, and my Twitch VOT, VODs. Um, this stream will be on the Twitch VODs channel, not my main ASMR tales channel, and my Instagram for lovely pictures. Now, just so you guys know, because I posted this for my patrons and uh, my Discord, um, I will be away from like next week until the early week of January. I will then be away later on in January for a week to celebrate my birthday. I'm going to travel to the States to spend time with my friends. So in January, I'm probably only going to be able to do like two streams in the week before um, between traveling. But keep an eye on my social media about that time because I will be taking uh, January off um, of uh, like on a small hiatus from making content on YouTube. So you're still getting an ASMR, ASMR tales for this month, but just not in January, just because I've got a number of things going on in my life, including traveling in and out of the country. It's just going to be a bit of a messy month for me, um, but I should be streaming once or twice on Twitch uh, in January. So I will see you guys in the new year and let me just see who's currently live and we can send them some love take the whole month off still <laughs> i really do appreciate that but a part of me is just like oh but i already had to reschedule for beacon pines and i feel bad come on there we go 
Alrighty, guys. You know what? Let's go share some love uh, with the wonderful Hobby Tan. Send a ton of love over to Hobby Tan from my lovely Lost Tales here at the Blue Rose Respite. Thank you all once again so much for joining me tonight to celebrate hitting 40,000 YouTube subscribers. Here's to 50, 60, 70, maybe even 100k. But thank you all so much for joining me tonight, guys, for your amazing support. I hope you had a ton of fun with me and a happy, wonderful, happy holidays, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the new year, in 2023. Thank you all so much for joining me. And remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And tonight, this year, next year, now and forever, stay wicked and wonderful. Good night, guys. <laughs>